You got questions, I got answers. It is mailbag time here on Seahawks Today. It is our second-to-last mailbag before the regular season gets here. We're going to talk everything from trade rumors to season predictions, whatever you guys got for me. We'll answer it all here in just a matter of moments on Seahawks Today. This comes from the live show we do on Wednesday afternoons where you guys use the hashtag Seahawks and Super Chat to get your questions in. And you may be saying to yourself, how can I be a part of the next Mailbag Show? Well, if you subscribe to Seahawks Today and join the Noti Gang, those are the real ones that are subscribed to the channel, then you'll be the first one to know when we have new content, when we go live, when we have breaking news, all of that right here on Seahawks Today. Subscribe now. Turn on notifications so you never miss a moment. If you're part of that Nota gang, spam Nota gang in the comments section here on today's show. All right, let's, uh, let's start with a, a super chat. Star Wars Iron Giant writes in, hashtag Seahawks, how do you like Estridge last Saturday? So uh, it's twofold here with D. Estridge, right? He went out with a bang. In his final game with the Seattle Seahawks, had that punt return touchdown, had a couple of nice plays receiving-wise, but it was a little too little too late for D. Eskridge as the ultimate did not make the 53-man roster and went off to Miami to join their practice squad. And I'll say this, the Seahawks made the right decision. You can't just let one game, the best game he's had in a, what, three-, four-year stretch, all of a sudden – change your mind about D. Eskridge and say, you know what? Yeah, we should keep him around. I'm glad that they didn't take the bait, per se, from that one game that he had. They liked D. Williams a little bit better when it comes to special teams coverage. Chenault, uh, you know, some of these other guys at the wide receiver position, they made the right call saying bye to D. Eskridge. Wish him nothing but the best, but I'm not going to miss him, I can tell you that. Matrix with a $5 Super Chat writes in, with all these players in recent games played, what's your thoughts on the Seahawks' records? All right, so we're going to do an updated record prediction video uh, in the coming days. So I don't want to give my record prediction just yet, but I'll lay it out this way, folks. I think the floor is eight wins. I think the ceiling is 11 wins. The 11-win mark is literally everything going right for this team and, you know, getting some help along the way. They do face a decent number of rookie quarterbacks this year, so that bodes well for them. Uh, But that's what I'm looking at. This team, if all goes according to plan, should be a playoff team this year. And if Mike McDonald gets into the playoffs in his first year in Seattle, that's a successful season, and you got to feel optimistic about the future. Remember what I've been saying. It's a two-year plan. Year one, the goal is to get in the postseason. Year two next year is when you should be an NFC contender. Big Bob writes in, could you see the Seahawks trading for Evan Neal? So I was talking to our buddy Marshall Green of Giants Now, and if you recall, Evan Neal and Charles Cross both came out the same season, uh, the same draft, and Evan Neal was picked slightly ahead of Charles Cross. And Evan Neal has been awful, to say the least in his time in the NFL. The Giants were hoping that they found their starting left tackle for the next 10-plus years, and that's been far from the case. He was moved to the right tackle spot and couldn't keep the starting job there. He's not expected to start for that team. They're shopping him around. I'm not giving up on Evan Neal. Um, I think that you could trade him for a day three pick maybe a fifth or sixth round selection. And you think about the uncertainty with the right tackle spot for Seattle with Abe Lucas on the pup list, with, uh, you know, what we see George Fant, as old as he is, we'll see how much he can put together here. You could potentially take a flyer on Evan Neal, and what's it going to hurt? It's not like you're the Giants here and used a first on him. Um, Obviously, there's some talent there, and the Giants – have not been a well-run organization. They haven't done a good job of developing talent, so it might not be all Evan Neal's fault. I'm open to that possibility. I'd be surprised if they did it, but I I wouldn't be opposed. Should the Seahawks trade for Evan Neal? Type T for trade, P for pass. Can the Seahawks fix him? What do you think? Weigh in, let us know. 
Jefferson writes in, what is the role of Seattle's new D.C. since Mike will be calling plays on defense? So A.D. comes in, and uh, with Mike calling the defense, A.D. is kind of the eyes and ears, right? Mike, he is, you know, he always gets compared to Sean McVay. They call him the Sean McVay of defense, right? And McVay calls the offense for the Rams, and he lets his defensive coordinator handle the defensive side, and they split things up that way. But Sean McVay has still had some very successful assistant coaches. I mean, you think about Zach Robinson, who's now the OC of the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, Shane Waldron came up through that system. There's been a number of guys that were his OCs there previously. And with AD, even though he's not calling the defense, doesn't mean he's not heavily involved. And his background is with the defensive line. That's going to be a big point of emphasis especially when it comes to stopping the run, developing Byron Murphy, getting the most out of Jaron Reed uh, and Leonard Williams and those guys. That's going to be the big area that AD is going to be looked at. The Kingdom writes in, man, what a place that was. Could the Seahawks trade for Tyree Wilson of the Raiders? I've seen Tyree Wilson's name come up, and you look at Tyree Wilson, edge rusher, formerly out of Texas Tech, uh, first-round pick. He was a guy that the Seahawks had looked at, and the Raiders going a whole new direction with uh, Antonio Pierce as their head coach, trying to change up that defense, and they're looking to potentially move some pieces around. With the uncertainty at the edge rusher spot for Seattle right now, with Uchenna and Wosu banged up, um, you know, what are we going to see out of Draymond Jones, Boye Mafe, Tyree Wilson could be a potential trade option with not giving up like a first-round pick like he was selected for. I think that might be a good value find. And what have we talked about a lot? I'll continue to reiterate this. Mike McDonald maximizes his talent at the edge rusher spots. And to me, that wouldn't be a bad idea uh, for a second-year player to see what he could potentially do. Should Seattle trade for Tyree Wilson? What do you guys think? Why for yes, in for no? Way in the comments section. Let us know if you'd be interested in that potential deal. Got a great deal we're offering Seahawks fans right now. Byron Murphy jerseys on sale at chatsports.com slash Murphy. Add a nine to that one. You got the home jersey, the road jersey, the alternate throwback uniforms as well. We got free shipping available. Go see for yourself. Chatsports.com slash Murphy to get yours today. Right in time for the season. Still time to get yours before the season starts. The link is in the comments and description of today's video. Chatsports.com slash Murphy. Uh, Townboy writes in. Do you think Mike McDonald could bring the best out of Kobe Bryant? He was on the same team as Sauce and won the Jim Thorpe Award. I sure hope so. And, you know, with him being on the safety spot, he's had to learn the position. And naturally, he's a corner. That's what he played at Cincinnati when he won the Jim Thorpe Award, played alongside Sauce. They were a terrific one-two punch. And I think for Seattle, when we talk about getting the best out of Kobe – If we're going to be realistic here, is Kobe ever going to be a great safety in this league? Probably not. But if he could be that number three safety, similar to what Mike McDonald did with Geno Stone last year in Baltimore, who had, what, six picks and was, I think, either first or second in the league in interceptions, if he could be that, I would be thrilled so if he could be that number three safety and play at a high level, could Mike McDonald get out of that out of him? I think he could. And that would be huge for this team. So we'll see. Phobia writes in, uh, how confident are we in the offensive line? Are there any potential old linemen on the market? So there's a couple names out there. We talked about David Bakhtiari this week on the channel. He's sitting out there. I feel a whole lot better about this group than I did a couple of weeks ago with the additions of Connor Williams. Charles Cross has had a very good camp. Bradford and Haynes have both looked good. We'll see what Tomlinson brings to the table. Um, but I, I think that they're going to kind of roll with what they got and then reevaluate things after week one and see if they need to make any changes from there. But this offensive line, you think about Olu, for example. Olu is now a backup. But that's a guy that could play center or guard and give you that positional flexibility. And that's the main thing. Comparing this group now, compared to what you had last season, you have depth. And that's even with Abe Lucas out on the pup list. So I'll go about a 7 out of 10. I feel much better than I did. 
but still work to be done. Last question. El Presidente. All right, Sin. What do you think about no quarterback in the practice squad this year? I don't think it's a big deal um, because let's, let's look at it this way, all right? So P.J. Walker would have been, in all likelihood, your practice squad quarterback, all right? And P.J. looks so bad that I said this on the program a few days ago. I would not have personally been comfortable with him getting elevated to the active roster if, God forbid, something happened to Smith or Howell and he had to be the backup quarterback. If something happens to Smith or Howell, go get a Ryan Tannehill or, 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 or something like that. You're much better off getting a veteran than you would have been with P.J. Walker taking a spot of the practice squad and hoping to get elevated. So I, I don't think it's it's that big of a deal in all honesty. Appreciate you joining us here on Seahawks Today. For continuing coverage, subscribe now, turn on notifications, and we'll see you next time here on Seahawks Today.